Convergence of Two Rivers In 2002, I was saved through the local church movement, associated with Watchman Nee and Witness Lee. The local church movement is a Christian movement that originated from China and spread to the world. Both the Plymouth Brethren and C.I. Schofield's teachings were strong influences on the formation of the local church movement's doctrine and practice. Although some of the local church movement's practices and teachings are still controversial for Christians today, I learned a lot from them, principally how to develop and maintain a holy lifestyle and a habit of reading the Word of God. In 2013, I had been a part of the local church movement for 11 years and married to my wife for seven years. Sadly, we could not have a baby because of a medical complication concerning my wife. We sought medical help from places all over the world. One day, in the summer of 2013, my wife and I, and another Chinese believer, went to New York to speak with a Chinese herbalist. By that time, my wife had already been preparing for her residence, and she received an offer from a university's medical center in Pennsylvania. On the way to the appointment, we were discussing the possibility of moving from Maryland, where we live, to Pennsylvania. Suddenly, I had a vision. I saw a tornado, or a whirlwind of sorts. It started out small, but it grew bigger and bigger. I felt the Lord tell me in the Spirit, Do not leave Maryland. There will be a great revival coming from Maryland, and it will spread all over the world. Initially, I was a bit shocked because this was the first vision I ever received from the Lord. Since the local church movement was an evangelical church who did not teach about these things, I was never taught to be prepared to receive any visions. However, my wife and I felt to follow the leading in our spirits from this vision, and we, therefore, gave up the opportunity in Pennsylvania and stayed in Maryland. I felt God was giving a promise that revival would come like a tornado and spread all over. In late 2014, I realized we could not solve our infertility problem via medical solutions. Doctors told us that we would not be able to have a baby naturally, and we failed to conceive after four to five in vitro fertilization treatments. The Lord even blocked the way for us to use an egg donor. I realized this when our egg donor suddenly changed her mind at the last minute. These events pushed me to seek help outside of my evangelical church, since they were not able to minister divine healing or prophetic words to us. This is when I started watching teachings on divine healing and the prophetic gifts on YouTube through other charismatic pastors and teachers. In 2015, I also began to travel within the U.S. to join healing revivals and prophetic conferences. One of my trips landed me at All Nations Church in South Carolina. There, I received prayers by Mahesh Shavda and his staff. While there, a prophetic member of Shavda's staff told us he saw two lines crossing several times through the sky, and the Lord said, Convergence. He shared with me, that he felt it was a divine appointment for me to come to their meeting to receive prayer, and that this was a crossroad moment in my life. He was right on point. What he didn't know was that I was secretly seeking help from Pentecostal and Charismatic churches while still part of the local church movement denomination. Eventually, I left the denomination completely, and although the process of leaving was very painful for me, I knew it was necessary. I felt like a baby being weaned from its mother. However, I was comforted by the Lord as he continued to speak with me. Not too long after, I had a vision of the Yangtze River in China. The Lord showed me a tributary in both an upper and lower stream. He told me that I was unified with the body of Christ as long as I followed the leading of his spirit. He reassured me that it was him who brought me to the upper stream and now he was leading me to a different stream. The people in the upper stream, where I began, would join me later, but I would never return to the Tibetan plateau where I started, even though my tributary began there. He encouraged me to follow the flow. I did, 
and haven't stopped. On May 31, 2017, the Lord appeared to me in another dream. I saw two rivers. One was full of water and very turbulent. The other river had less water and was less turbulent. The second river flowed through the place where I live in Maryland, but it became muddy and stagnant. Near my city is a small town called Columbia. Columbia is an area known for its business and commerce, and for a short time I attended a small charismatic church there. In the dream, I got the impression that I should connect the two rivers. When I looked up, I saw the Lord standing from a very high place with the two rivers behind him. It seemed that these two rivers were both just the upper parts of the streams. Since I am Chinese, analogies of the Yangtze River and Yellow River appeared in my mind. Both the Yangtze River and the Yellow River originated from the Tibetan Plateau. But the Yellow River flows north until it eventually reaches the sea in northeast China. The Yangtze River flows southbound until it reaches the sea in southeast China. Since the Yellow River flows north through a desert-like area, it sometimes becomes stagnant or congested. China has a project going on to build a canal to import waters from the Yangtze River to the Yellow River in its upstream to solve this problem. In my dream, I understood from the Lord that the stream I saw in Maryland was like the Yellow River in China. Upon seeing the two rivers behind the Lord in the high place, I felt the Lord say, These two rivers will converge. Naively, I responded, Well, we can probably build a tunnel in the upper stream of the two rivers, and it will create a shortcut to bring the streams together. I spoke this from my natural mind and reasoning because I thought it would save time and energy. The Lord replied, No, these two rivers will converge in the lower stream. Although I didn't understand, the Lord took me back to Maryland. I was supernaturally brought back to my home by riding on roller skates from the high place where the Lord was. When I returned, I saw the river again, but this time I also saw traffic in the city and a muddy road on the street. I noticed the flow of the river had been congested like the Yellow River in China. Then I heard the Lord say, It is not time yet. I sensed he meant, that either the time is not ready for this convergence, or some people are not ready. It will happen when the time and people are ready. After traveling to other places in my city, I was suddenly brought to another high place, like the first place where I met the Lord. However, I did not see the Lord this time, but I saw my wife following me on her own roller skates. My movement through the sky was in the shape of a U, like the ramps skateboarders use. In the first part of the dream, I was with the Lord on one end of this U-shape. Now, I was on the other side of it, and the bottom of that letter U was where I lived. I saw from above that the flow of the water had indeed been interrupted from flowing to Maryland. As I watched the traffic, business, and busy routines, I got the impression that people were too occupied by their routines to prepare for or receive this convergence of streams. That day, the Lord did not tell me what these two rivers represented, but since then, I have felt it may be referring to a convergence of holiness and power. A convergence must take place within the body of Christ, where believers are characterized by a biblically set-apart lifestyle and attitude, and are filled with the Holy Spirit, and operating powerfully in the gifts and authority granted to us by Christ. During the first decade of my Christian life, I focused on developing and living a holy and set-apart life. Now, the Lord is leading me to study the gifts of the Holy Spirit and become active in them. I have had many prophetic dreams that seem to support my interpretation of this dream. I have even had other dreams of people from my previous denomination receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. I have also dreamt of many preachers from my previous denomination preaching fervently on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Another impression I received from this dream is that a convergence must take place between the heavenly stream and the earthly stream. It's like the two camps Jacob saw. The word Mahanaim 
is the name Jacob gave to the place where he saw the angels of God in Genesis 32 too. It literally means two camps. The time when Jacob saw the angel armies and named the place Mahanaim was also the time that the Lord revealed himself face to face to Jacob and touched his hip. There were two armies when Jacob saw the angels of God there, and they were dancing together and working together. Mahanaim is also referred to in Song of Solomon 6.13. Why should you look upon the Shulamite as upon a dance before two armies? Mahanaim. We, the body of Christ, are the Shulamite woman, and Jesus is King Solomon. The relationship between us and the Lord is the same of Solomon and the Shulamite. Solomon is the husband, and the Shulamite is the bride. Likewise, Christ is our husband, and we are his Shulamite. Although in the dream the Lord specifically said, It is not time yet, I received another impression afterward. God has been wrestling with the body of Christ for a long time, as Jacob wrestled with the angel in the camp. Just as his hip was touched, God is about to touch the church's hip. We will lose our natural strength and be lost in him in wonder. And when he is ready to lead us, we will go forth dancing to do battle together. The battle belongs to the Lord, but he is waiting for us to lose our natural strength. Spiritually speaking, Jacob eventually was transformed into a spiritual Shulamite when he had a face-to-face -face encounter with his lover, Jesus Christ. His wrestling with the Lord turned into dancing with the Lord. I believe the two streams I saw may also therefore represent heaven and earth. The heavenly army is about to invade the earth soon. The convergence is not only the convergence of different streams or denominations comprising the body of Christ. It is also the convergence of heaven and earth. I have had dreams to support this interpretation too. For example, I have been taken into heavenly meetings where I saw saints discussing and planning things related to the coming revival in China. I shared this in another writing. Not only were the angels' armies actively participating, but the saints were very much involved in planning the revivals on the earth, too. The angels are also anticipating and celebrating the eventual convergence of King Jesus and his bride, the Shulamite. Let's remember that in Genesis 32, Jacob was in fear while he prepared to see his brother Esau. He was afraid he might be killed. But God opened his eyes to see the angel army that was with him. The body of Christ is like Jacob today. We are moving with a seemingly weak army on earth, but there is a heavenly army of angels and saints actively cooperating with us. The enemies we face today will be turned in our favor, just as Esau's heart was turned toward Jacob. When heaven starts its invading, many will repent and become our friends. As many were God's foes, they will become his friends because of his great love for them and us. Let's stay encouraged despite the onslaught of negative things in the natural realm. Let's remember that in Genesis 32, Jacob was in fear while he prepared to see his brother Esau. He was afraid he might be killed, but God opened his eyes to see the angel army that was with him. Although the church is moving with a seemingly weak army on earth, there is a heavenly army of angels and saints actively cooperating with us. The enemies we face today will be turned in our favor, just as Esau's heart was turned toward Jacob. When heaven starts its invading, many will repent and become our friends. As many were God's foes, they will become his friends because of his great love for them and us. Just as Psalm 23 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The Lord is not only with us in the valley, but he is waiting for us to go to a higher place, and he will even give us spiritual roller skates to carry us there. Enjoy the ride.